Well, what if I were to tell you the metric of ISIS is a lot like OSPF, only different? You probably wouldn't be surprised. Let's delve into the very interesting topic of the ISIS metric in this video. Now, what we have to keep in mind about the metric with ISIS is that it really has been modified many times over the years. That's one of the issues when you have a real flexible routing protocol like this. So there was modifications for traffic engineering. There was modifications made for IPv6 support. So it can seem very, very confusing when you go back and you look at the history of the ISIS metric. But let's make this as simple as possible for us from the perspective of our service provider core technologies. Cisco is really going to divide this subject into two. And that is, there's a narrow metric and there's a wide metric. And that refers to how many combinations of metric values that we can have. You see, when the metric was narrow and supported very few values, this was not an issue. This is when ISIS was first invented. You got to remember, all the links back then that connected internetwork nodes were relatively slow. There wasn't this variety that we have in link speeds today. So a narrow metric in ISIS was not a big concern. In fact, if you go back in history, the design of ISIS was really to be a lot like EIGRP in that there would be a default metric, a delay metric component, an expense metric component, and an error metric component that could be utilized. The only thing that ever got utilized and supported by vendors, including Cisco, was the default metric. And the issue with the narrow default metric was that it was eight bits in size. That's it. That's the total bits we would have for defining the metric. This was done for speed purposes. And this eight bits was problematic because the first bit is what's called the supported bit. The second bit is used to distinguish between whether it's an internal or an external prefix. And so that only left six bits. That's 63 possible metric values. Yikes. That would not be good in a very complex environment where we want a wide variety of metrics that are possible, metric values. So sure enough, that gave rise to RFC 5305, and they defined a wide metric for ISIS that, of course, Cisco supports, and this moves the metric out to four octets. So we're going to have plenty of flexibility with a wide metric in ISIS. Now, it's time for some official recommendations on the ISIS metric, and these are not mine. These are the great Russ White's. Uh, yeah, uh, so if you want more information than we delve into here on ISIS, check out the books or the videos that are available by Russ White. Yep, Russ White. And He's uh, been a longtime friend of mine, a longtime Cisco kind of guru guy. And uh, yeah, he has excellent materials on ISIS. And in uh, an ISIS metric video that I saw Russ record, he was just straight ahead telling all of us, look, go to wide metrics. If you're currently using simple narrow metrics in ISIS, move to wide metrics just in case you ever need them you'll have them in place. Also, keep in mind, OSPF doesn't have an auto cost reference bandwidth like OSPF does. So you can engineer that, but it's not going to be automatic. Yeah, ISIS doesn't look at the bandwidth and then set a metric as a result. So we need to engineer the metrics that are going to be utilized and we can pattern them after how OSPF uses auto cost reference bandwidth. So if you want to, you can kind of like simulate that behavior. But with that said, Russ was very clear. We need to tune very sparingly, only where needed, and document any metric manipulations that we make and exactly why we made them. 
Uh, the last consideration is that we should really always consider symmetric metric usage, meaning if we have one end of a link set to, let's say, a metric of 1,000, well, we really should have the other side of that link set to a metric of 1,000 as well. Well, I hope this sheds some light on the subject of the ISIS metric. It's kind of like OSPF, but of course, different.